When they look at you, they're looking through you. And I have often thought that they, they sort of take you into a, a world of the past. It's a blazing look, and it's a brief look. For humans looking back at the cheetah, it's time to take a good, long look. Cheetahs in the wild could be extinct in this generation. Lori Marker's life's work has been dedicated to making sure that does not happen. Today, there are about 10,000 cheetahs left living in the wild in the world. Two thirds of the countries where cheetahs are living, the populations are probably so small, 100, 200, that they're probably breeding to extinction. They are genetically very similar. Marker's Cheetah Conservation Fund, or CCF, operates in the bush of central Namibia in southern Africa. Namibia has the world's largest concentration of wild cheetahs, about 3,000. After years of working with captive cheetahs, Marker moved here from Oregon in the early 1990s to dedicate her life to working with cheetahs in the wild. Over time, CCF has become home to about 40 cheetahs, orphans whose mothers have died or who cannot survive in the wild, and they may help save the species. The animals that were living in captivity here become sperm donors to maintain and keep frozen genes that could be put back out into the wild population. But we need to understand more about the female biology and physiology just to understand at what time they ovulate. Because then if you did catch an animal in another country in the wild where the numbers were so small, you could get a female to actually carry um, the embryos to have live birth out in the wild. That's the best hope for those cheetahs in small pocket populations. But what about the few thousand in larger groups who could survive without reproductive intervention? Their problems are even more complex. The cheetah is very interesting because it doesn't do well in protected game reserves. We started looking around and realizing, well, they were living outside because of the conflict with lions and hyenas who killed their young, stole their food, pushed them out, and then they were coming into conflict with humans and their livestock. And that's why it, it's in such a, a dire strait. There's no reserve for the cheetah. Cheetahs killing livestock is a serious issue, and farmers in the 90s were killing hundreds of cheetahs a year. Marker set out to change this cycle, to find a way to allow the cat and livestock to coexist. Some of the concepts were small strokes of genius. For example, guard dogs to protect livestock herds. The CCF now raises and gives away to farmers Kangol Anatolian shepherds. The point of it is the alarm bark says, I'm here and I'm pretty big. The cheetah's not aggressive, they stay away from people. It would just as soon turn around and run away than be able to fight. We found that most all the farmers had reduced their livestock losses to no livestock losses. So it actually has been very successful. We've got like a two-year waiting list. But dogs alone won't solve the conflict. Cheetahs still need room to roam and wildlife prey. Markers, radio collar, and other research revealed that in fact, given the option, cheetahs prefer wildlife kill to going after livestock. Markers set about educating farmers that a good technique for reducing herd loss was actually letting wildlife prey coexist on their land. It's ironic, but predator-friendly farming has improved profits for farmers. And in addition, CCF has helped market beef from cheetah-friendly farms as cheetah country beef. It sells at a premium price. The profit goes back to the farmers. We sell about 10,000 tons a year. We actually took the dolphin friendly tuna idea and um, have tried to put it into our beef. Another market-based initiative to allow farmers and the CCF to profit from what is seen as unproductive land, land overgrown by thick spiny bush. This bush is also harmful to the health of cheetahs whose eyes were being scratched during hunts. We decided that there was a way that we could harvest the bush and it could be put to good use. We could put people to work, and with that, we could clear habitat. Clearing habitat meant that we could have more wildlife. And we now have these bush logs that are an eco-friendly log. They carry the cheetah's label. I think that's a lot of creative conservation there. She's not gone the conventional way of protected areas. She has chosen landscapes that are virtually hostile to cheetahs, which are not even parks, and she's managed to recover and stabilize cheetah populations. She does wonderful work not only with the ranchers down in Namibia, or the school children, and I think to have a person dedicated to one species in one area till 
the person is really accepted, does good over a broad spectrum, and I wish there were far, far more like Laurie Marker. Well, we have a very short period of time, and really we know what we need to do to save the cheetah. We've got a couple years to really get our programs into effect. We need the funding in order to do that, and we have to have it in place in probably another five years. If we don't do that, we're probably not going to have the cheetah on Earth in, in 15 or 20 years. So it's that critical. Today is a special day at the CCF, the kind Marker lives for. It's a cheetah release day. OK, happy Independence Day. Let's go. Another animal captured in harm's way on a farm, saved, and now put back into the wild. The releases are, I think, what keeps one at that higher level. And seeing an animal go free and know that you've been able to put it back out into the wild. I started this because I, I, I love animals. And I met the cheetah and I thought it was one of the most amazing creatures I had ever seen. And here's an animal that can go 70 miles an hour. I mean, it's, it's built for speed. It's the most elegant creature there is. And from that, its world is disappearing. I know I've got a short period of time. I need to activate things now because I don't plan on having a cheetah stick. We can make a difference.